I'm Jordan. And I'm Rosanna. And on this podcast, we explore how to take life off autopilot and relentlessly pursue a life worth living together. together. Hello, and welcome to episode two of the Relentless Pursuit podcast. Today's episode title is called Everything is an Investment. Um, If you read or heard the title of this podcast episode, we might have you thinking that this conversation is all about financial investments or planning for retirement. Um, So if you were hoping to hear the secrets of investing in the stock market or real estate, you're not going to find them here. No, not us. (laughs) Um, Have you ever noticed, though, that you're always investing your time and your energy into something? Think about your days. What are they filled with? From your career and your hobbies to your networks and your communities, everything you say yes to and are a part of is an investment. It's an investment of your time, of your energy, and of your resources. So if you have to make sure that the things you choose to allocate your time and resources to are indeed the right things. So let's talk about how to invest in your life and not just in your portfolio. Nice. What's wrong? (laughs) (laughs) Just tripping over my words a little bit today. (laughs) I remember being, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember when we were newly married, I'd like go over the monthly budget and I would just be like sweating over how much we were saving or how much we weren't saving and uh, how much we were spending. And I wanted to just kind of accumulate this little pool to eventually like invest in something. And then I slowly learned about investing and the fact that like once you have some sort of a resource you can like allocate that so that it it grows in some kind of way and i had wished i'd learned a lot of those lessons financially speaking when i was even younger but i feel like after i understood money in that way everything else started taking on the same sort of uh you know like metaphorical significance there are so many resources that we have beyond money and we're constantly investing those kinds of things. So I heard something interesting not too long ago that um, we, we all have time and time is one of the biggest things we'll be talking about today. But do you know how long one million seconds is? Uh, no, I was an English major. I do not know how long one million seconds is. One million seconds is about 11 and a half days. So do you know how long one billion seconds is? I do not know how right, long. Just to put in perspective the difference between a million and a billion, a billion seconds is almost 32 years. Okay. So one thing that got me thinking is I heard someone talking about our time uh, according to the number of seconds that we have. And in a sense, we're all time billionaires. We have, we hope, at least one billion seconds ahead of us that we can invest. So if we thought of those seconds like dollars how would we invest them or spend them wisely versus foolishly and so i think the thing that hit me and this is one of the reasons why i wanted to talk about this like so early in the podcast is that we we're going to invest in something we're going to be spending these time dollars that we have in something whether we want to or not and I think it's wise to make sure that we are investing in the right things. So we're going to be spending our time and energy. So what are the best ways to allocate those resources that lead to the kind of growth and outcomes that we would like? That's, um, that's a pretty intense way to look at your life. I mean, if you're looking at seconds as dollars, right? So we've already, we've already gone through a, a billion yeah, we're, we've, we flew past our first billion we're, seconds. Right. And so we've got like how many more? Two billion, three billion more seconds left. So how are we going to use this time, that time moving forward to invest in the right things? Mm-hmm. That's it's, a lot to chew on. It's, it's a lot to think about. A few thoughts to get us started. Yeah. Um, so when we were coming up with the idea for this podcast and everything being an investment, I um, it was my job to kind of research some interesting investing statistics. And so when you look at statistics and investing, there's not all of these articles about time investments or, you know, investing your time wisely. So I'm going to utilize investment statistics and kind of show how those could translate into the investment of our time and our lives of what we want to kind of create moving forward. Um, And so one of them um, has to do with kind of like retirement savings. Um, And it says, if you do not start saving until 45, you will need to save three times as much as if you start at 25. And so I remember being married. Um, We got married, how old were we? 23. We were 23, so we were young when we got married. 
Um, and I remember we were married just like a year or two and like you had a very strategic saving plan and then you were getting information on like life insurance and then IRAs and I mean, at that time I'm like, we should have been doing this sooner. Yes. And you were, <laughs> at that point you were like, we should, yeah, we should have been doing this sooner. And then you, you kind of had me panicked and I'm thinking, I don't want to use the money I have now to prepare for something later. And it took a long time to shift to that. But if you look at it strategically in terms of investings and savings, right? If you start saving at 45, like how much more time are you trying to make up for when you get there? And so I know that's something that you and I have been talking a lot about is that um, we want, one of the things that we've chosen to invest in is each other. And so investing in each other means when our kids are grown and out of the house at some point, we want to still like love each other and adore each other and admire each other and the the fruits of those right but we can't put our kids in front of that and ignore each other until then and then hope when we're 65 and everybody's out of the house that we'll still know each other love each other understand each other and move forward we would have to backtrack to kind of like build into that so when i was thinking of investing and starting now and we've talked a lot about investing in our relationship from early on that it always has to be a priority and that it always has to be important. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of one of the kind of like (laughs) light bulbs that went off and kind of the wake up calls, like maybe we are making the right decision that our kids are important to us and they're amazing and wonderful and we do as much as we can with them and for them, but we also want to prioritize each other. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of one thought I had. Um, Another thought I had had to do with another investing statistic and it said this, on average, women invest more conservatively than men. I thought that was interesting. I've been talking to a few other ladies about kind of um, just the role of women and shifting and wanting to be out of the house, but also wanting to be a mother. So that's that's uh, like a financial statistic. But financial statistic within our our analogy. But within the analogy of investments, right? Like. Um, women do need to invest in themselves and not conservatively. Like we need to like better ourselves, whether it's health, wellness, personal growth, development, learning. Like I think sometimes women, although we do those things, we do it in very small increments because Mm -hmm. we're maybe a little more, uh, yeah, we're just kind of maybe risk. What do you call it? Risk adverse Mm -hmm. where we kind of want to control everything. And so we don't take the risk to, invest bigger in ourselves and Mm -hmm. so i think that maybe has some implications for kind of the now and investing in yourself yeah so maybe it's not more conservative it just is more conservative in like certain arenas of life right okay yeah Mm -hmm. um and then the third statistic i thought would be interesting to bring up now as we're kind of all dealing with kind of like this covid19 and worldwide pandemic it says the greatest returns seem to be when most people expect the biggest losses So it says the greatest three-year period of owning stocks was during the Great Depression. And the next best return was in the three years starting in 2009 when the economy struggled. When it goes down, then there's a rebound. There's a rebound. And so it's during those times when things are bad that investment needs to be greater. So if you're investing at that time, then as things rebound, there's more kind of like fruit from it. And so I think that has to do with all of our lives now because I think a lot of people have put their life on pause Mm -hmm. or are just waiting for this to be over, right? They've kind of like waved the flag. Mm -hmm. They're not in their normal routines. They're not hitting it as hard as they should in multiple arenas in their life, waiting for it to be over. But this is the time that we kind of like dig in. So when you make the investment, then you're going to see greater rewards from that. After this is all over. Mm -hmm. So those were some of the statistics about investing that got me thinking about how are we investing in our lives now. In our time and energy, because I don't think it works a lot different. I think that you you make those kinds of investments with your your time and energy and and your talents and in different arenas, and there's dividends that you'll reap as you go and eventual outcomes that you'll get to that I think are worth the time that you put into it. Agreed. So although it's not a podcast about investing in your portfolio, some of those same truths and kind of investing tactics, I think can be applied to how we're investing the time in our lives towards what we want and what we're pursuing. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into some of our questions then. And I'll I'll fire off first with a question for you that I think will be maybe just a good place to start and applicable to most folks listening. And that is, what would you consider to be your biggest investments? I think right now the biggest investment would be our kids. Um, 
they're one of those slow growing investments where it's just it's every day day after day over time where we only have so many minutes with them Mm -hmm. um yeah and you could like i I know like people have done the math and if you you can add up the number of minutes from the time they're born until the time they they turn 18 or whatever age they end up you know becoming an adult and moving out and truly being on their own and it is scary it is a finite number of minutes that you have with them yeah, I think I've seen it in hours, and I forget like how many hours it is you have with your child before they like turn 18 and go off to college if they choose that path. Yeah. And when you look at it like that, and you're kind of like we were talking about in our last episode, like, you know, waiting, to, you want to fast forward through all of this to get past that, you think, wow, there's there's only so many precious minutes and hours, and we can't wish them away, that we need to make that investment now so that when they're 18, they're responsible and they're self-sufficient and they have good hearts and they're they're doing good for the world. So mm-hmm. I think that's, especially as a mom, I think that's one of my biz- biggest investments. Mm-hmm. Even if I'm running a business or if I have other priorities, like they're my biggest investment. What I do with them and for them mm-hmm. is where we're going to see those returns. And those are Long ways yeah. off. Sometimes it doesn't always feel like we're uh, <laughs> getting uh, what we thought we were, you know, out of the the investment, so to speak. Um, but we know, like the, the the time and energy that we pour into those relationships and that's the, the the things that we try to teach them go a long way towards who they actually become. So I would I would I would say the same thing too that parenting is the biggest investment. But I also it struck me too like it's. It's a it's a commitment. I mean, you could you could have kids, but not be investing in them in theory, right? Sure, you could you could outsource your investment, right? So I mean, we've kind of like we've not only committed to starting that investment, but also committed to maintaining it or like contri- continuing to contribute to it as we go. Well, I think contributing makes it sound like um, the savings plan we have set aside for them for college, where like monthly you contribute. <laughs> it's just like a donation into the pile. Um, but we're we're doing more than that. With when you talk about investing in your kids, we're cultivating something there. Mm-hmm. And the image that comes to mind if we are committed to our families and to raising our kids is we're cultivating. It reminds me of when I go out front and dig out the weeds. Mm-hmm. You're like cultivating the yard, you're cultivating the soil, you're cultivating the garden, right? Mm-hmm. You're like, you're digging through the soil, you're taking out what's bad, you're putting in what's good, you're constantly yeah. pouring so water, you're favorite nourishing favorite it. Analogies for life is the garden. And so we don't want to get too many analogies at once. We should do like a whole episode. Our favorite metaphors there for you life. Go. Here we go. Um, but I, I, I agree, like trying to, yeah, like take out or literally like weed out the, the, the bad and help something beautiful blossom over time. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, that's like a, I mean, it's an investment, but it's, it's a hand, all hands on deck investment. Like mm-hmm. you're rolling up your sleeves and you're getting dirty mm-hmm. as opposed to just, mm-hmm. you know, you're co- like a contribution that you're just putting pennies in the bank and watching them grow. This is very different. All right. So what are, what are your other big investments? Gosh. I don't know that I've... Well, we, that was the quite Like, what are, what are some of your biggest investments? And it doesn't have to be all now, like even over time. Like, I would consider education to be an investment. And we've talked to uh, a lot of you know, youth currently in their education and looking at how the, the whole point of education is not so you can complete an assignment and get a grade, but it's to, like, use your, your word cultivate, to like, cultivate your mind and your understanding of the world, your ability to think so that years and years down the road you have a foundation of using your mind well so that you can use it in new arenas and new ways and continue to learn and but i think that for me like that that almost seems like a newer mindset like growing up as a kid i don't remember like education being talked about in that way that you're you're learning this you're cultivating your mind so that at some point you can use that to contribute in this way you know it was more of like a means to an end like this is what you do this is what you learn this is you're a kid you You go to school right you go to school that's what you're (laughs) supposed to do you're supposed to learn you're supposed to then go to high school and then maybe college and then and then Mm -hmm. get a job um where i feel like now the shift is a little bit more of like Mm -hmm. this mindset of yes you're you're cultivating who you are you're investing your time in your education and your knowledge to become anything you want to be 
Yeah. So it's a little bit different. I think it's different too. I mean, when you're a kid, you, you just kind of have to go and that's the story that's outlined for you and you follow along with it. But once you don't have to be in school anymore, you realize the real value that you do get out of it. And you know, many people do choose to continue with their schooling or to you know, find some way to get educated in some new arena that's interesting to them. Okay. Well, on that same question, you asked, what else are you investing in? Um, and I think one thing for us that's been important is investing in our community. Mm -hmm. Um, where we live about a year ago we moved and we moved from the town we live in to the town we live in we like eight (laughs) blocks away it was a big um we had lived in this town for nine years um, and we felt very well rooted and planted here um the connections that we made um were very important to us and it made us not want to move and so and i think that has to do with the investment of like who we are and what we've done within the surrounding community that was important the to connections, us. connections, yeah. I mean, I'd say like all relationships are an investment and we kind of put our, our roots down in this town and uh, same with our children as well. Like they have their own connections. So it's difficult to, difficult for us to just uproot and feel like you're starting fresh somewhere else. Though I feel like at least I can learn a lot from you, but just continue to like maybe in, invest more intentionally that not just in like relationships or friendships, but like in the community, I feel like I can give more than maybe what I've had the mindset for over the last several years. Like, how do you mean exactly? Like even I think of our, our neighbors on our street. Like I feel like I can be just more cognizant of who they are and having intentional connections with them giving to our community like i've coached the soccer team a handful of times and i i think that's a you know a a, a cute and appropriate way of like having some connections beyond just our immediate household or or our street and like i I would see it as something like that where if i have something that i can give to my community and i think of community like the the town um, then I, i would like to find ways to contribute whether it's through you know donations or volunteering or just establishing more connections or, you know, anything along those lines. Yeah, and I think those are the things that people maybe often miss when someone is having a food drive. You know, it's it's easy to just kind of pass by that sign, but, like, if you know that you're feeding other people in your neighborhood who don't have those resources, like, that's a way to show up, to be present, to invest in the area that you live in, to take care of others who, mm-hmm. you know, can't. Um, even with me being registered in the local Bloomingdale Chamber of Commerce, mm-hmm. you know, connecting with other business owners in the area, seeing what they're doing, supporting one another has has been eye-opening for me. Whereas you can live here, but if you think about the businesses within the confines of the local town and the community and what they do for the community and with each other, it's it's interesting to see that, you know, unfold. Mm. And so I have another question too, and I, I think it's your turn, but I'm going to take it. That's fine. Um, I have a few interesting questions I've been thinking about that I wanted to ask you. So I'll, I'll go with this one because I don't want to miss it. Uh, on our first episode, we talked about these are the days and the focus was kind of contentment and focus on the present moment. So there's a bit of an irony that our second episode is talking about investment, which I think by its nature is putting time and energy into something now that has its fruits and its payoff later on down the road. So how do we strike that balance between finding contentment and a focus on the these are the days mentality versus the everything is an investment and we're looking towards the future kind of approach? Well, if we go back to the billions of seconds that we have, right? Um, there's within a day we have 24 hours and we often say that there's not enough hours in a day. Now that things have slowed down, there seems to be plenty of hours in the day. So I think it has to do with prioritizing. So, you know, kind of chunking your day where there's there's hours allocated to our kids and enjoying them and living in the moment and being carefree. But, you know, today you can plan for tomorrow to step outside of yourself and your immediate needs and your wants and doing something for someone else, right? And we, we can do that by getting the kids on board and doing something for our neighbors with them. You know, kind of just... You can, you can enjoy what you have and be content, but you can also be forward-focused and minded. I think there's time for all of it, mm-hmm. as long as we're strategic about it. And I think that's the biggest thing is being strategic. With mm-hmm. an investment, it would be the same. It's being strategic, mm-hmm. knowing when to allocate time and funds and efforts towards putting more in. You can't always, but there are times that will allow you to do that, and you have to take... Mm-hmm. A lot of people do that, like at the end of 
the year they'll they'll rebalance their portfolio and maybe that's something that on a uh, on a, some sort of a, a basis, some sort of a, a timeline, there's this sort of rebalancing, this questioning you know, of, am I giving everything it's due? Am I investing towards my values and making adjustments if need be? Well, and you and I do that every year. We either do it at the end of December or beginning of January, where we look at our lives, kind of where we are financially um, as a family, what our goals are, and we try and realign those things with where are we going to allocate our time, our intentions, our interests, our, you know, our are giving like mm-hmm. where where are we going to put those things and i think that's something that couples families individuals have to cultivate this mindset of stepping back kind of putting it all in front of you looking at it and then being intentional about where you're going to where you're going to be mm-hmm. all right, you got a question i've got a question um well i've got 3 i'll start with one <laughs> um this, I think this has been really important to me in the last couple years, um, but I want to get your take on it. Uh, how important how important is it to invest in yourself? Like on a, on a top, if there was a top five list, yeah. how important to you do you think it is for you to invest in yourself? I, I mean, I, I think you have to. Um, to me, that that makes the investments that you put towards everything else that much more valuable as well. Um, I mean, and, and there's a lot of different areas in, in yourself that could be included. I was thinking about even just your your health is an investment. And in a way, that's maybe the only thing you can ever invest in that could increase the, the number of, the, the amount of time that you have, you know? I remember my dad told, I don't know if he remembers this, but he told me when he was trying to teach me as a kid how to eat healthy and I wanted nothing to do with it. He told me, he's like, your health is like putting money in the bank. And it that that has sunk in with me over the years as I've you know, finally understood, like I probably should eat vegetables and exercise and sleep and, and do things that create a healthy life. And I think that that is an, an easy foundation to look to that allows me to have uh, you know the, the, the health that I want to have to be able to give the time and energy to other things. I would consider education to be another area of investment in, in yourself. And there's probably other domains that we could look at too, like recreation um, and hobbies and you know, skill development, um, like any of those other things that are really focused on yourself and make your own life and living and thinking better, but can also make you a better parent or a better spouse or a better colleague or, you know, better in, in all kinds of domains. And I think if, as life gets busy and, you know, we're pressed for time, I think that might be something that's overlooked. That's the first one that goes. That's the first one that goes, right? Like I've got to deal with this at work or my kids need me here or I've made this commitment to the community or I have. So we, we don't take care of ourselves or we're not investing in long-term health for ourselves, which, you know, brings kind of like stress and being tired and, you know, not feeling well, which does not put, you know, make us at, at our best. And so I, th- I would agree that it's investing in yourself is important. And sometimes mm. we forget to do that. Yeah. And I think there are seasons that that happens. Mm. Like when you're starting a family and kids are small, it's sometimes that goes by the wayside. And then we kind of, you know, muster the strength. The kids are a little bit older. We can balance mm. a little bit more. Um, but I think it's something long term if you're, you know single or recently married, it's something that you have to continue to do. Yeah. So going off of that, and also referring back to one of the um, stats that you had found was, is it ever too late to start an investment? So like you said, when you're 45, like financially, you have to contribute three times as much as when you're 25 too. I'm assuming that was uh, like a retirement funding or something like that. So in the same vein, like, is, is it ever appropriate for someone to say, like, oh, I'm, I'm too old, really, my prime for investing in this area or that area of my life has have passed? I would say no, um, because like an investment, like where you can't reap rewards until, you know, 30 or 40 years later, right? Like whether it's a rental property or portfolio that's a long term investment, there are other things that are that are shorter term. Mm-hmm. And it just reminds me of um, a quote that says it's never too late to be who you want to be. Mm-hmm. You can start now, like, mm-hmm. and I think that's a great way to look at it. Like, okay, I maybe I won't be a concert pianist ever, but why should that stop me from learning to play the piano if I want to play the piano? Mm-hmm. What about a bad? Is there any such thing as a bad investment? Ooh, 
Um, I don't know because I was thinking about that, and I like I think about even the the bad times or the mistakes or the things that I've regretted. You know, there there's a lesson to be learned from that, and I feel like that in itself is a, a a good outcome when we can learn from even a negative experience. Well, I don't think you would willingly go into something thinking I'm going to start this relationship <laughs> with the hope that it fails, so that I have a, a a great experience someday to you know to tell you about. I don't think like that's the you know, in, in that way, that would be a bad investment, right? Like, I'm going to enter into this relationship or try this that I know will be bad. Um, but I don't think, I think we always need to take, there needs to be a sense of risk, too. Mm-hmm. That not everything that we do is going to be safe or comfortable. I think it has more to do with, like, the trying mm-hmm. and learning from it. And so yeah. even if it doesn't turn out the way that we hoped or, you know... You know, kind of like, you know, here's another one, baking, right? Like we follow the recipe, we hope it turns out well, and then it's, you know, like a Pinterest fail that you take a picture of and send to your friend. Right. Um, you know, we don't hope for that, but the intention is to go in to learn something, to do something, to master something, you know, mm-hmm. to make something, and, and sometimes it doesn't work out and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that. as, as I looked at experiences, I know there's, there's plenty of bad ones in our past, but at least we're able to glean a lesson from it and make the future choices that we make stronger. So in that way, there is a positive outcome from the investment. Okay. Do you have another question for me? I got a bunch. Oh, yeah. go I'll, ahead. I can keep them coming. I get a little nervous because sometimes they're so deep and then you want me to answer Ooh. them on the spot. I'm not sure yeah. how to answer. Yeah, I do like this, putting you on the spot. Okay. Um, is it better, you've heard the phrase diversifying investments? Is it better to like diversify your investments, kind of spread your time and energy over a number of areas, or is it better to have a more narrow focus? I mean, is there a wrong answer to this? <laughs> I mean, I, I have an answer, and mine would be to have a smaller focus. And this is just based on like me in the last 10 years and what I've tried, where I've had my hand in probably two dozen things. Um, and I think sometimes long term that's hard to maintain and it's hard to manage and really the only one that suffers is me because i'm giving of myself to too many different things um so like this last year i did like an assessment of like what are the most important things to me and really digging in deep to those things Mm -hmm. and not that i've shut myself off to other opportunities or to other people or relationships it's just there are a finite number of minutes and seconds and time Mm -hmm. and so those priorities that need the most cultivation and the most investment like i need to be more focused Mm -hmm. with especially at this time i might be able to open myself up to more later or to change the focus or the scope like parenting is is time sensitive your kids are going to grow up one way or another but maybe it's good to look at like like after that like a a, 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 what do you call it an empty nester phase life is a great opportunity to kind of change your investment you have more time available now to put towards something else Right. The traveling is going to happen then. It's a whole lot of traveling. I mean, we still go places with the kids, but right. the traveling that I picture in my mind yeah. isn't going to happen in our 30s and 40s. Right. So it's just knowing that like I will get to some of those things or be able to like be deeper into those things later on. So like let me focus on, on, on you know, A through F right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think every year I also reassess like, like what has shifted if my business shifts a little bit like what how do i refocus that towards like new investments of of growing it one way or another Mm -hmm. um even um, with relationships with people those you know change over time and and what does this relationship need Mm -hmm. so i think it just you know life living in the moment and like letting things come to you too like just the way that life kind of happens then kind of shifts kind of where you prioritize those investments Well, I have a bunch more questions here, but I do want to get to some of our, our takeaways as well. And um, I, I know like these these conversations always lead me to think a little bit more precisely, uh, maybe even just a, a little bit more accurately about some of the best ways that we can live and, and make these decisions together. So I'm sure we'll be talking about this a bunch even after we um, press uh, the stop button on the recording. But for me, like the biggest takeaway in, in talking about this is recognizing first, like, just realizing and remembering that there is a, a finite number of minutes and seconds and of energy that we can put towards things. So being intentional with how we are expending that is something that definitely comes to the forefront of my mind. But I think what also comes to my mind too is that I can't, almost like the opposite of some of where our conversation has gone. I There's a lot of pressure when we think about 
how what, like what we're investing in and what we're not investing at this moment. And I think it's good too to, at least for me, like take my foot off of the accelerator and enjoy the th- things that we are have, have already invested in that are like we're, we're right in the midst of of the fruit of you know what i'm saying so instead of thinking i have to be producing something or i have to be learning something and you know that's one of my one of my problems is like i feel like if, I, if i'm not making something or improving in some way <laughs> then i'm just wasting my You're time wasting your time um, but I, I think that that's that's not the case either that not that I, i'm encouraging wasting time or i want to get better at that um, but I, I do want to get better at um, kind of enjoying the things in life that don't lead to an, an obvious um, like you know quantitative outcome yeah and I think you know one of the things to remember too is there are good ways to invest your time and what's good for you isn't necessarily good for me and what's good for us isn't necessarily great for another family so it's really just that intentional stepping back and assessing like where are our strengths where do we want to like put our time, our energy, and our effort to choosing those things and then to being consistent? Because I think it really comes down to consistency. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what makes a, a solid investment is like believing in it and and pouring that resource into it more so it grows. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, we're glad you all could join us for this uh, second episode of The Relentless Pursuit. Um, if you haven't yet, please check out our website. It is at therelentlesspursuitpodcast.com. And you can find some ways to uh, give us some feedback and to reach out to us from there. And please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to our podcast and leave us a five-star rating and a raving review. We'd love to hear from you and we're looking forward to sharing more episodes with you in the future. Thanks, guys. See you later.